So, uh, Mr. Jet, I know that you are here from uh, the beginning of this week. So, uh, how do you spend your time uh, when you are not here in Slovak Philharmonic and not uh, rehearsing for tonight's concert? Do you have any spots, favorite, or somehow, how do you spend your time? Conducting other orchestras. <laughs> so, you know, it's just a wonderful life I have because I'm also music director of an orchestra in Korea and in Israel and New York. Um, but now this is my great new love, Slovakia. And when I'm, so when I'm not here, I'm uh, lucky to be working, really conducting every day. And uh, no vacations for a long time. I did have three days, two weeks ago, free in Switzerland with friends in Lugano. And I love to walk and I love to read. But usually for a musician, we live with our scores, with our music, you know. So every bit of time traveling in hotels and every day, you're thinking about music. Mm-hmm which is not work, it's mm-hmm. just a pleasure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what do you think is the place of uh, classical music in contemporary Western culture that we are in? What is the place of it? What do you think? Well, what I think is we shouldn't call it classical music. That's what I think. I think music is music. And the quicker we understand that and start to market it in this way, then we'll attract more young people. So most important is music education in the schools because in the world, less and less. Actually, just today, I heard an announcement the British government is putting some more money again into the schools for more um, instrumental lessons, which is a good thing. But in the United States, where I have a program for young people in Miami, El Sistema program, um, the, there's almost no music in the uh, state schools. It's tragic. And I think music, so first the answer is we have to put music into everybody's life. Mm-hmm. Not just passive listening, but also listening and thinking and uh, f- listening to great music, whether it's great rock music or great rap music or great orchestral music or piano music, whatever it is. Music that makes you think and then get young people playing instruments mm-hmm. because it does such wonderful things, proven things for mathematical studies and everything, discipline at school, attendance, all these things. Mm -hmm. So the best thing any country can do is put money into music education and it will help everything. Mm -hmm. So this is the most important background for the future of classical classical music, which I really do hate that title. I understand we have to use it perhaps, but Mm -hmm. it it puts a lot of people off, I think. Mm -hmm. So call it orchestral music or opera or chamber music. So, um, my next question is, how can classical music contribute to bridging cultural differences in the globalized world that we are now in? Well, it's a cliché to say it's a, music is an international language, but it's a very good cliché because it is. Mm-hmm. And music just circumvents all differences that we have, how we look, how we speak, what language we speak. We all understand when music of whatever type is sad or it's happy, it's excited, it's funereal. We all understand it in the whole world, every different musical culture. And generally speaking, I think we can say that if people really are in love with music, music teaches you to listen. If you listen to music, you learn to listen to words and then you learn to, you know, to enhance your intelligent critical thinking about things. So I think music has an incredible part to play in the future of a world which is um, becoming more and more dangerous. Uh, So all culture, of course, but music especially has this ability to reach every single person and bring us together. We all understand one another through music. In connection with this uh, question, maybe, we live in a really technical world now. So do you feel any influence of technological innovation in your profession in, in some particular thing? Sure. I mean, I think every generation has had new te- technical ad- advancements that have been utilized to the mm-hmm. good. I mean, mm-hmm. electronic music yeah. is an obvious example, but now it's through um, the media, through the ways we can reach so many people with music. Mm-hmm. So we don't just play a concert here, we can stream. Mm-hmm. We can be all over the country, all over the world. Mm-hmm. We can be in schools and everybody's home. Mm-hmm. That's a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. I think the downside of tech, 
technology are coming back to education and children is this incredible fast multitasking uh, nature of the world where the young people if they're not careful or all our brains become fried yeah. um, and we don't think in sentences we don't think in paragraphs mm -hmm. and music gives us this oasis to come back to mm -hmm. where there's time and there's a big span of time to think and to just dream. Mm -hmm. So I think that in this technological world, for again, for young people especially, the great music that we play has a fantastic opportunity to reach them. And mm -hmm. I think if we market correctly, young people will come and be so happy to have space around them for a while. Yeah. Hopefully. They will. I hope. they will. They will know. OK, so now, uh more, most uh, back to your work. What is the most important thing at your work? What do you think? Is the working with orchestra or or uh, knowing the the piece that you are playing, or what? What can you tell well, this easy? It's all the same. I mean, you know, you every musician, whether you're a conductor or an instrumental player, you have mm -hmm. to come to rehearsal knowing your music very thoroughly, and then. It's a wonderful collaboration with musicians, conductor and musicians, to receive the ideas of the musicians as you listen, mm -hmm. and for them to listen to the kind of structure of the performance that I'm, the conductor is giving, which mm -hmm. each conductor will be different with the same piece, and the emotion and the spirit. But it's all about listening, really. Conducting is about listening rehearsal, so it's all about, you know, quiet, listening and it's all about I mean this is not my idea I'm just repeating an idea of other great conductors <laughs> that I know but it it's all about chamber music and orchestral playing is not about conductor coming very well prepared and just say follow 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 no sometimes the conductor is following the beautiful solo of an oboe and you wait and you let them be free so um, my job is to be, of course, very, very prepared. The job of the orchestra is to be very, very prepared. And then we can make wonderful music together, I think. Yeah. Okay, so now we are here in Slovakia, in the Slovak Philharmonic, and you will be the next principal conductor, which is a great thing. So I know that you so far um, uh, spend with our orchestra maybe not that much time, but you told me before that you know it from previous years. So maybe you can tell me what positive aspects does our orchestra have? And on the other hand, what is the biggest challenge for our Philharmonic? Well, you have a fantastic tradition here of Slovakian music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was coming here from the mid 80s when I was assistant of Claudio Abbado. And he knew, of course, uh, Ludovic Reiter, your great conductor and family who are still yeah. here and great friends of mine. And, and then I started to come over the years occasionally to conduct the old Slovak Philharmonic and came with youth orchestras here. So I've always had a really special feeling about coming here to Slovakia, a really special feeling. So when they asked me to become a director, I was so happy because it feels a special family here for me. Mm -hmm. And I think the orchestra is better and better. Um, I'm just uh, so excited by the quality and the discipline and the, the attitude in rehearsals. And uh, I think this orchestra has such incredible potential. And I think our job is to make sure the rest of the world knows about mm -hmm. this orchestra and the music of Slovakia. And my last question. So what are the main aims of you uh, uh, when you will be working here with uh, Slovak Philharmonic? Well, the main aim, of course, is to make music to the highest possible level for all people, to try to never have an empty seat, to try to see more young people in the concert hall or people that have never been before, whatever age, just it's their orchestra, you know, it's not mine, it's not ours, it's the people's orchestra and they, we've got to make sure that they understand they're welcome. Mm -hmm. I would, as I said before, I would like to see what opportunities we have of getting this orchestra much better known abroad, like other great orchestras in different countries. So that's one thing. We can do this through our performances, through streaming, through tours, through recordings of the highest level. Um, this, I think, is the next thing that we can do. Um, 
But as I say, most importantly is to make everyone feel welcome into this uh, concert hall. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>